Welcome PLC. My name is Jesse Cunningham. I am Life Group co-leader to Free to Be. I'm also husband to the beautiful woman that does the announcements every Sunday um, and also an usher on Sundays. So if you ever see me, uh, feel free to come up and say hello. Um, I'd like to start with a short prayer to get us ready for this and um, I'll start that. Dear Lord, I just ask that you stay with us throughout this entire journey, this fast, um, this beautiful new year of 2024. God, I I pray that each one of us is touched by you individually. Um, We all have goals and we all have ambition, Lord, and I just pray that you help us reach those goals. And in Jesus' name, amen. So I want to encourage you guys to journal throughout the fast, you know, write down some prayers and thoughts as time goes. And you can always go back and reflect on those um, in tough times during the, during the fast. It's going to get hard. We're going to get hungry. We're going to get tired. We're going to get frustrated. But a lot of times those prayers and those thoughts can help out. Um, each of the subjects we're discussing are designed to help and encourage a deeper understanding and stronger developed relationship with Jesus, which will help lead us to a fully devoted life with him throughout this fast. Today, we're going to discuss security in Christ's promises. And again, my name is Jesse Cunningham. Um, I've been here at PLC for over 12 years. Believe it or not, that was before the theater. I actually was part of uh, the very first person in this church ever. (laughs) So that's enough about me. Um, I want to talk about security and Christ's promises. And the way I'm going to do this is kind of geared towards some of the people who maybe have never done a fast before or they're new to church, they're new to um, the idea of Jesus, and maybe they're a little bit on the edge. They're not really sure because that's where I was when I found PLC. Um, And so I'm going to share a little bit of my story, give you something kind of tangible to hold on to and and something um, to guide you through and give you a little bit of hope during all this. Um, So to start out, I was raised Roman Catholic. Um, didn't really feel like I belong. I felt judged. I felt that I was never really good enough. Um, so that led me to leaving my faith at the age of about 17 years old and onto the military at the age of 18. And again, um, I was faced with a lot of questions in faith. Uh, where was God? Who is God? Is there a God? Um, and I remember you know, the things that we saw, the things that we did, just led me to believe that I was not worthy to be saved and receive God's love. I came back out of the military, um, and I can say that honestly, war had changed me. I came home to a wife and a son, very young, um, eventually had another child with her, and you know things just didn't work out between the two of us, and so subsequently we ended up getting a divorce. And so again, I was left with questions could I be saved? Where's a place for somebody like me in God's kingdom? A divorced man, somebody who's been to war, somebody who left the faith. And so that led to a deep depression, a lot of anger throughout the military. I unfortunately have been suffering with some severe PTSD, which then led to alcohol. It led to pills and powders that led to an addiction. Um, That addiction was fueled for years and ended up in jail. Um, I unfortunately ended up burying my best friend who died of an overdose during those years. So again, here I am sitting in jail now, wondering, is there a place for me? How do I fit into a society of God? Where is God? Who is God? And then one day, 12 years ago, I decided I had tried everything but God. And I remember I had met somebody special to me that introduced me to Passionate Life Church. And at the time, Passionate Life Church is what I always call a basement of a basement. It was an overflow for another church. They just happened to give us some space to practice. And that's where I found God. When I walked in those doors, I was terrified. I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't know there was a God. I just thought I'd try it out. And I remember seeing some beautiful smiles, happy people, laughter, things that I had missed or didn't see for at least 10 years prior. And I felt a deep desire that I wanted that. I just didn't think that I could deserve it, that I could obtain something like that because of where I've been in my life. 
when Pastor Andrew gave the prayer and asked people to raise their hands if they wanted to accept Jesus Christ in their hearts, as difficult as it was for me to do, I raised my hand that day. And during that, that time, went on for about three months, I just kept coming back to PLC in the basement of the basement, listening to what Pastor Andrew had to say, starting to understand Jesus from a different light. I started to understand what grace was. I started to actually have somewhat of a hope in my life. And then there was a scripture that came across, and it was Deuteronomy 31, 8. The Lord himself goes before you, and he will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. So that was a scripture that really spoke to my heart at the time, and it's going to be something that goes with me until the day that I die, and I intend on passing this on to my children, and I hope that some of you on the other end of this podcast can hear that and can hear the hope in the scripture. And I'm going to read it again. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. I hope that resonates with you as it did for me. And I'm going to explain something to you now that for me, this is the tangible side of faith that I needed And I think there's going to be a handful of you that need it. And even those who are strong in their faith, this is a little something to boost your confidence and your faith. Because now, who I am 12 years later, I started a addictions recovery group. It's called Free to Be. Never in a million years did I think that I had the ability to do something like that. I know when I prayed and God answered my prayers and put me in a position to do something like this, I was terrified. But it's given me the opportunity to see God work in so many people's lives beyond my own to where I have that tangibility. I get to look out and see people break through addiction. One of the strongest, hardest things to fight, and I've actually witnessed it a handful of times, We are now in our fifth year here at PLC, and things are just getting better every day. Since I raised my hand, I'm also to the point where I've been married now, going on five years. Married my best friend. Um, God placed her in my life, and and only a way that I can describe it was Jesus. It was God. There was no other way to explain it. Neither of us were looking for marriage or a partner, and it just so happened that I needed a co-leader for my group that I started, and Pastor Andrew introduced me to Sarah, and Sarah has been the most amazing addition to my and my children's life that I could have ever asked for, along with marrying my best friend and starting an addictions recovery group. I've rebuilt relationships with my family and friends, and you can imagine a life of addiction. Again, like I said, I've been in and out of jail many times been to war. You can kind of get a picture of the kind of man that I was. Had a lot of broken relationships with my family. Those relationships have been repaired, and they're thriving, and I owe that all to Jesus Christ. I'm now happy. I remember a time prior to PLC where I didn't remember what happy was. I couldn't remember the last time I felt happy, and now I live it. I live joy. I live happiness. And one of the biggest things that's come through all of this and trusting in Jesus is my own trustworthiness. It's hard to admit that for a long time in my life, I was not trustworthy. My own family wouldn't give me a key to the home when they weren't there. God has changed all of this in my life. And I know that if you have the patience and you just keep showing up like I did and like so many of us did, he will change it in you too. There's one other scripture I'd like to read, and it just so happens to be at the bottom of my journal here, and it's just so fitting, and that's John 8, 36. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And that's all we have to do. We just have to believe, and we will be set free. In Jesus' name.